And hi everyone and welcome back to chapter 9. Trading area analysis. What a term. I haven't heard that term in a long, long time. So let's take a look and see exactly what trading area uh, analysis would be. Certainly it's got to do with location and place when you talk about in the marketing mix. And let's see if it talks about channels also. So in this chapter, there's a lot of objectives. Demonstrate the importance of store locations seems to be the number one factor here. We're going to look at three major factors, population, economic base characteristics, and also level of saturation. So let's get right into it. Yes, we heard this term many, many, many times in the past. I'm sure you have too. Location, location. Location is uh, the most important aspect when it comes to business, as they say. But it certainly is not the only one, but it plays a huge part. So criteria to consider uh, population, competition, uh, parking availability, and certainly today, in today's world, uh, where streets are now being shut down because of the, the virus and all that stuff, uh, certainly parking <laughs> plays a big part. Uh, how you get there, metros and subways, again there, uh, that has changed a lot too. Property costs, taxes, uh, legal restrictions, bylaws uh, also play a big part in location. Yes. So how do you choose a store location? You evaluate the alternate, uh, alternative geography areas in terms of residents and existing retailers. Certainly, if you have three, let's say, depanneurs at three street corners, would you go up and put a fourth one? Uh, fort, would you buy a depanneur and, and locate it on the other corner? Maybe, maybe not, right? But uh, this is, doesn't stop a lot of people to do this. You know, in New York City, at one time, they had a Starbucks, and this is no word of a lie, a Starbucks at the four corners of one, of one street. So... Well, make it whatever you like, but that's exactly what a lot of places do. And uh, here in Montreal, also a lot of coffee shops on corners or restaurants close by or next to each other. So, yeah, you got to pay attention to that too because you still have a lot of traffic when it comes to uh, location and competition. Uh, determine whether to locate as an isolated store or a planned shopping center. Again, in today's world, uh, you need to look for more isolation than shopping centers, right? And select the location type and analyze certain uh, alternate sites contained in specific uh, retail location type. So there's a lot that goes into when it comes to location. Again, in our world, it certainly does. A big thing that's happening in today's world is that a lot of stores are, are, are called pop-up shops. In other words, they'll open up and uh, they will have a certain amount of product to sell, a certain amount of time. That could be a trend. It could be a new product, and then they shut down. So they don't take out leases for years. They'll take out leases for months. This is a big trend, pop-up shops. A trading area is a geographic area containing the customers of a particular firm or group of firms for specific goods. Uh, or services, yes, like I said, like downtown, right? Downtowns usually are trading areas, big trading areas. And again, today, that has changed enormously. Shopping centers are trading area. Again, a lot of shopping centers are still not open, have been closed for a while in our beautiful world. Benefits of trading area, uh, again, question all of these, right? Discovery of consumer demographics, yes. Assessment of the effects of trading area overlap, yes. Ascertain whether chains competitors will open nearby. Opportunity to determine focus of promotional activities, yes, and review of other issues such as transportation. Okay. And also GIS software, geographic information systems gives you a lot of information about that. Uh, again, this is this is old news to everybody, you know. Population, demographics, and so on. So yes, it does play a big part. Uh, some private firms offering mapping software, I guess. I'm not sure if any of these still exist. I would think they'd, some of them do. And uh, uh, you don't see uh, Waze on here or Google Maps. Hmm. Okay. 
Uh, segments of trading area, you got uh, primary trading areas, you have fringe trading areas further away, and your secondary trading area. This has got a lot to do with the same thing as, you know, space. Uh, when you have a primary trading area, 50% or 80% of the stores customers live in that area. Uh, secondary, less, and fringe, all the remaining customers. Fringe usually is if you go out of your way to go to go for a day trip or something to go shopping. Uh, destinations versus parasites, right? Parasites, the destination stores, better assortment, better uh, promotion, generate trading areas much larger than competitions. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts, it's worth the trip, right? It's a statement. Parasite stores do not create their own traffic and have no real trading area of their own. These stores depend on people who are drawn to the area for other reasons. You can pause here and just reread that. Yeah, so that's really what it is. A lot of stores do come in handy, and uh, what they do is uh, it describes a retailer that lives outside the actual existing traffic flow and originates from circumstances other than its own promotional effort. In other words, it basically leeches off everybody else. That's why it's called a parasite, because it leeches. Uh, trading areas and store types. Largest department stores all the way down to smallest convenience stores or defenders as we know it. Oh, we have a nice color here. There it is. So the trading area of a new store, different tools must be used when an area is evaluated in terms of opportunities rather than curtain patronage and traffic patterns. Trend analysis, consumer surveys always play a big part and computerized trading area analysis models. Yeah, there's all kinds of models, analog, regression model, and gravity model. So basically what it is, is just uh, certain rules and regulations that goes a regression, which is random, and a gravity model really, um, how could I put it to you? Um, let me see. Uh, it's traditional form, it predicts trade that, that flows based on economic suck size and the distances between two units so gravity in other words they pull pulls pulls together right overwhelming evidence that trade tends to fall within distance uh one law that you need to know is riley's law of retail gravitation a traditional means of trading area delineation establishes a point of indifference between two cities or communities so trading area of each can be determined there is limitations, certainly uh, distance is only measured by major thoroughfares, travel time does not reflect distance traveled, and actual distance may not correspond with perceptions of distance. Huff's Law Shopping Attraction delineates trading, trading areas on the basis of product assortment carried on various shopping locations, travel times from the shopper's home to alternative sites. So there's all these types of laws that come into play. Again, they use the word law here. I'm not sure if that's an exact law, but uh, it, it could be just a more information than law. Chief factors to consider in evaluating um, retail trade areas, size, of course, per capita and disposable income trends are big, are big questions. Uh, chief factors to consider in evaluating retail trading areas, management, management trainings, and clerical, and closeness to sources of supply, delivery costs, number of wholesalers play a big part. Chief factors to consider in evaluating trading areas, dominant economic base, I should say, dominant industry is one of them, growth projections is another. Competitive situation, here it's always the level of saturation that plays a big part. Uh, availability of store locations when it comes to evaluation, 
a number of types of stores, zoning bylaws plays a big part, right? And regulations again, taxes and zoning. Elements in trading selection, the population characteristics, economic base characteristics, and na nature and saturation of competition. So this talks a lot about the trading area and this term certainly is not a term that we use anymore. Location is still considered to be the term, but hey, let's talk about trading area. Thank you and see you later.